So next I'm going to show you how to measure insulin using a syringe and using a cartridge. Sometimes we need to know how to do this because if a pen falls on the floor, it can break. Um, that's usually only would have happened if the pen was f separated from the mm. two pieces and the piston has broken, but it's very rare that it breaks, but sometimes it can break. So it's great just to have as a backup system knowing how to use a syringe. So each syringe comes with two caps. There's a cap on the bottom and a cap on the top. This middle piece is called the barrel. So what I do is I hold onto the barrel and I twist the cap off the bottom part. Mm -hmm. And underneath this cap is where the plunger is. And the plunger can go back and forth. The orange cap underneath it, if I pull it apart, that's where the needle is. Mm -hmm. When I'm measuring insulin, I pull down the plunger and I'm trying to measure the space between the top of the black plunger to the top of the hub of the needle. So if I wanted to measure 10 units, I'd have this black lined up with the line next to the number 10 mm -hmm. and the space here is now holding 10 units of air. Okay. okay? So when I want to take insulin out of a cartridge, I put the needle into the cartridge holder and then I use counter pressure with my index finger and I hold my finger against the flange and I use my two middle fingers and I pull the, hold it upside upright and I pull the insulin down. I pull down once, often I can get a little bit of air there. So I just push that right back up again, and I try the second time. I, the second time when I pull down, often I pull past the number 10, mm -hmm. and then I push up the plunger until I match it up exactly with the number 10. Okay. And I hold onto the barrel and pull the needle out of the clear cartridge. Mm -hmm. Once I put that into the syringe, for some reason, I didn't end up using it. Could I put it back in? No. Okay. You would, if, if you didn't need to use this and you pulled it out, then what I would do is I would just waste this and okay. take it out. Okay. So let's go over this once again. The key points are, when you're ready to put the needle in, you put the needle into the yellow tip or the colored end of the cartridge not the orange plug. You pull down once and the first time there's usually air so just push that all the way back up again. The second time when you're measuring the dose go past what you really want to get and then you can more clearly see the exact number so you measure the exact number. Hmm. And when you're ready to pull the needle out of the cartridge, hold it from the barrel. Don't hold it from here. When you hold it from the barrel, then you don't change the dose. Next I'd like to show you how to use a syringe with a vial of insulin. The vials of insulin might be slightly different, holding different kinds of insulin. This particular kind of insulin is a cloudy insulin. So the first thing I'm going to do before I measure the insulin is I'm going to mix this insulin. The best way to mix it is to roll the insulin back and forth in your hand. We avoid shaking it back and forth because when we shake it back and forth there's air bubbles that get oh, created okay. and it's harder to measure the dose. Mm. So the best way to mix it again is just to roll it gently between your hands. And you can tell when you've mixed it sufficiently because when you look at the glass tube, you can actually see that it's all milky. There's no lumps on the bottom. It all looks the same color. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the next thing is each syringe has two different caps. There's a cap on the bottom and a cap on the top. This middle part's called the barrel. So what I do is I hold onto the barrel and I twist the end and pull this cap off. Underneath is the plunger. On this end is the orange cap and I pull it off and away from my hand and that holds the needle. 
This white plunger, I usually loosen it to go back and forth a couple of times. It makes it easier to measure the insulin. Mm -hmm. And when I'm measuring the dose of insulin, I always want to replace the amount of insulin I'm going to take out with the same amount of air going into the glass tube. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I wanted to measure 10 units, I'm going to pull the plunger down and I'm going to match up the top of the black part of the plunger with the number 10. Okay. And then with the glass tube, I'm going to take an alcohol wipe and I'm going to wipe this resealable rubber top mm -hmm. with the alcohol wipe. I'm going to poke the needle into the center of that rubber. I'm going to push the air in. Mm. Now I'm going to turn the bottle upside down. The needle doesn't fall out. I'm going to hold on to the glass bottle or vial. I'm going to use my finger to hold the needle in place. And then I'm going to pull down some insulin. Mm. Doesn't matter how much to begin with. So the first time I pull down, I don't care how much insulin I get in. And I'm just going to push all that insulin back up again. Why I'm doing that is it gets rid of any air bubbles in there and it makes it easier for me to measure it the next time. So the second time I pull down, I tend not to get any air bubbles. If I was to see an air bubble, they often are down here at the bottom of the black plunger mm -hmm. or they sit up top here. Mm -hmm. So I use my eyes just to see down here or up here if there's any air bubbles. If there is, again, I just push that back up again. I see some people hold onto the bottle and they try to flick like that. Mm. But what I see happening is a lot of people bend the needle when they're mm. trying to do that. So this avoids bending the needle. Okay. So again, you can pull down some insulin if there's any air. Just push it all the way back up again. Mm. Then push, pull down again. If you're measuring 10 units, I go past the number 10, and then I push the plunger back right back up until I get exactly to number 10. Okay. Once I'm at number 10, if that's my dose, then I'm ready to pull the needle out of the bottle, and I hold onto the barrel. I don't hold on down here because that can change the dose. I'm gonna hold onto the barrel and pull the needle out of the bottle. It's a resealable bottle, so you don't see any insulin leak out. Mm -hmm. And then I pull that out, and now I'm ready to do the injection. Okay. This syringe, you use it just once only. It's meant for one use. The, each needle comes with a little bit of lubricant on it, so that when you put the needle into your tummy to inject the insulin, the needle goes in very, very easily. Mm -hmm. Also, every time you use a needle, it gets a little bit duller. Mm -hmm. So you, the best practice is you use it once, and then when you're finished, don't bother recapping because people tend to poke themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you're finished with this insulin syringe and you're ready to dispose of it, this can go directly into either a sharps disposal like that, or you can put it into a coffee tin or a plastic container. And Another way of disposing of this is what's using what's called a, a safe clip. There's one product called the BD Safe Clip, where you put the needle in and it clips the needle off. Oh. But use it once and then discard it until your next time.